What's up guys and welcome back to WBC Builds and welcome to another Victorian house tutorial. So today I'm bringing you another 1.16 never update Victorian house and you can see it right behind me now. This is a beautiful Second Empire home that would fit both a survival and a creative style. So let's jump into the video. I'm going to show you guys what blocks you need to build it and then show you guys how to build it. So on screen now you can see what blocks I've used and how many I've used of it. I try to be as accurate as possible, but as you guys know, I do miss out some things sometimes. So please let me know in the comments below if I've missed anything and we can pin that at the top so everyone knows what I've missed. Now, I'd like to use this time just to say, please consider leaving a like and also maybe subscribing to the channel so you guys can get more of these beautiful house tutorials and I can keep making them for you. Now, without any further ado, let's get into this video. I can show you guys how I built this. Okay, so here we are. What you're looking at right now is the sort of basement level, but it's not really a basement, it's more of like a foundation this building's been built up on. Now the bricks are a little bit deceiving because they aren't actually the entirety of the external walls. Let me get down and explain what's going on here. So across the front here, we have a sort of porch section. Above all of this, we'll be placing quartz bricks like so. Each section is slightly different from the last because I've just liked to really make this quite complicated for us and for myself to try and show you guys. So here we are, let's start in the left-hand corner over here and count our way around the whole building so you guys understand exactly what we're building. So from here, we need to place a quartz pillar. Then you need to go three birch fences across like this with brick in the back so you've got brick showing through in front of the birch pillars sorry the birch fences then you've got another quartz pillar on the edge here from here you need to go up two so one brick and then one quartz pillar and now you come to the front entrance so above all of this will be a staircase in a bit we'll get around to that later on under here you need to go across four birch fences because this whole front section which will be the tower is six blocks wide now we come on to the actual front porch section. So it needs to be six blocks from there to here. So we've got five birch fences in here. And then from here over to here, again, it's six blocks. So you've got one in the center here, which will be the support for the main sort of balcony bit. Coming round to the side, we've got another three across here until you've reached the edge of the wall. So two more birch. And again, all of this is filled in with brick behind to give it quite a nice look. Coming onto the side, we've got another quartz pillar here. Then you want to go 17 blocks of brick down until you reach another quartz pillar and that's the edge of the main side of the building now coming around to the actual back porch section we've got the same quartz pillar birch fence set up again uh, i haven't really mentioned we've got stone underneath here you don't have to put stone under there that's just my way of breaking it up from the ground you can just leave it as dirt i think it is quite dirty underneath these sort of buildings not to say they're horrible it's just like it is literal dirt under there. Uh, but anyway, it's three birch fences across there, some quartz. And then we come round to the back and you've got nine birch fences until you reach the middle one, which should be at 10 blocks. And it's nine birch fences again. I can't say birch very well. Until you reach this block here, three across the back. So you've got five blocks out from the edge of the building. Now this is where it gets a little bit different because this length of the wall is not the same as that length of the wall. So we start here and then you count 15 blocks of bricks down this way until you reach this quartz pillar. And then it's another two birch and you finish back where we started. So that's a little bit complicated. Let me just zoom up here so you guys get a good view of what it looks like. So the overall building is 17 down the left hand side. And it's 19 down the right hand side. Across the front it is 23 and across the back obviously it's 23 as well. So let's jump on me having placed all the quartz bricks around here so you guys get an idea of what the actual base of the building looks like. Right, so you can see now on the ground we've covered the entirety of the base with quartz bricks. So I hope this makes a little bit more sense as to what we were trying to achieve there. But you can now see from the front how this looks really cool. I love the effect it gives. So next thing we've got to do is build ourselves a little walkway up to the front door. Can be using just some polished andesite slabs for this. I always just use polished andesite slabs as my sort of go-to block for building staircases and that. Don't know why. Um, and there's probably a better option out there. And this is literally as basic as I get when it comes to building this. Uh, we can obviously grab some polished andesite out. Now, for you guys at home building this, experiment do something a little bit different this is just my quick and easy way of adding a little bit of a path down so that's the staircase in i know it's a bit rudimental but anyway so the next step is to place 
the quartz pillars on the corners of the building. We're going to start here with the front. And what you want to do is count five blocks up. That should be five. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. And that is the first sort of level. You can do it in this corner. You're not going to see that corner, so there isn't much point. But we'll do it here at the front. And we'll do it here at the front of this one. Uh, leave all this blank because we're going to be placing birch as a sort of balustrade and a banister for the actual porch and the same again here you can leave this corner blank and just fill it in with your jungle planks so we're going to get into the putting the first window in now you want to count yourself two blocks in from this edge and then in here we have a window two blocks wide three blocks in between each of these two wide windows and then it's two more blocks off of the edge of this one so that gives you your window spacing for this we'll come back over here show you where the door needs to go just fill in those two blocks like so doorway goes in here and then we come over to this side because we're going to do the whole of the front quickly now and we fill in these two here and you've got yourself a window like that so bring up all of this up to the top like so fill in this section here and then we'll get to placing the windows in on the front so that's the front of the building built up to the correct level now what we need to do next is go around and place in upside down smooth quartz stairs at the base of each of these windows so we're going to come around and do this side as well. And now this comes on to the part of the video that I've been doing quite a lot in my tutorials lately. And it's when I discuss the use of trap doors. So for me, I always use iron trap doors because I have this little thing on the end here, the debug stick. Now this is because I'm building in creative and have cheats enabled, which enables me to use the debug stick. So I can do this with the iron trap doors where you don't need a power source to actually open them like that. If you guys want to see a bit more about that, I have a video uh, already on the debug stick so you guys can see what else to use it for. Now, if you aren't using the debug stick or you're building this in survival, you can always use birch trap doors or another trap door to show exactly how it can look with that. Again, it's, you know, I prefer iron trap doors, especially with all of this quartz going around. But with the birch, it still works quite nicely like that. I don't think that's any different because, you know, you've got the birch on there already. So what I'm going to do for this building actually is carry on using the iron trap doors to give it that bit more authentic look I was going for. But like I said, feel free to use a more survival alternative or don't put any trap doors in these windows at all. Um, I've only done it to make it look a bit more molded around the edges and it will come later on when we do the dormers as well as to what to use. But anyway, that's my little sort of two percents on the debug stick. So for the windows themselves, we need to carry on by placing upside down quartz stairs like that to form an arch over it. So that gives you a nice little arched window. We'll do the same over on this side so you can see what this is doing. And then what needs to happen now is before we go up any more, we're going to go around and do the rest of the walls and then we can come back and do the porchway. So let me get these in and we can go around and I can show you where the rest of the windows go. Okay, so that's the building at the front sort of done for the main base. I sh you can see they are placed in two dark oak doors as the main entrance way. Above that, we've done the same as we've done over the windows and fill up the rest. Later on, we'll come around and put the mouldings on here so it looks A-OK. -okay. Now, we're going to come around to the side here. I mean, it's time to put in a bay window. So let's build this up five blocks each side here. And we need to count over three blocks like that. And then on this third block, what you want to do is place another jungle oak plank like so. In front of that, you place down an upside down smooth quartz stair. Now you can place another one behind that, or sorry, next to it, because in front of this, we're gonna place it in another upside down quartz stair. And we're gonna do that another two times there. And that forms the base of the bay. Now underneath here, place three more like so. And it looks like it's now being elevated above the ground. So it has a bit of height to it, which I think looks really nice. Uh, the reason I've done this is obviously because the building's like lifted off the ground. It's not actually flush with the ground. So we don't need a base to the bay window. So you can see what I've done here. We've got this little corner here. You can leave it in. You can take it out, replace it with something else. We're going to put some glass in there in a bit. So coming around to this side again, we just need to do the same thing like so. And again, you can place something in there. You don't have to. Now at the back of this, you want to be placing diorite walls. And they go in the wall like so. And the same over here. And then you want to place two more at the front like this. And I'm counting up three blocks there, so you get your sort of look of the bay window. I've just noticed I've done something wrong here. There we go. One, two, three. Perfect. So this jungle oak fits in nicely with the walls there. And this is another one of those 1.16 features that I just love. And I can't wait to build in my creative server with these. But this is making bay windows using the new mechanics. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? So what we're doing here is just placing windows like this. So you've got one back and one across. 
forms like a little diagonal, makes it look like the sort of window's been curved round a little bit. It's great for making these bay windows and then you're just using white stained glass there to fill up the top. So let's fill this all the way up so you guys get an idea of what this looks like. Now once we get up to here, it's time to place upside down quartz stairs again. So coming out like this, following the path around, but this time it's one extended from what it was before. Uh, don't worry about this floating bit here, we're going to be placing some andesite behind here. I use andesite as a sort of flat roof, um, I like the look it gives. You can always texture it with something else if you aren't a big fan. So with the same again, making it sure it's one over. So this is like a little cornice that goes around the top of the bay window. And there you have it, that's the bay window done. Uh, it's time to repeat that on the other side in a moment. But we just need to fill up the rest of this wall. So there is no more windows on this side here. Now that's a design choice because on the interior you can place a fireplace at this point and that means you don't need windows removed in order to get the chimney up. So a lot of these buildings would have just blank walls like this to get in the fireplace. So let's fill up this side here and go around to the back. Okay, so we're at the back here and it's a very similar affair to the front. So we count in two blocks from the side, placing in the upside down stairs like so. Two blocks in again. This needs to be three blocks wide, so we are mirroring exactly what we got at the front there. Two blocks there, and then we're going to be placing some more quartz pillars. So it's a pretty much a mirror of the front, so I'm going to fill those windows in in a second. Now, when it comes to this bit, it's a count off two blocks like so, upside down stair in there. But this time we don't have another window, we have a doorway instead. So we've got the quartz pillar on the end, one block in like so, and then the second block in, so we've got two blocks in. And this now forms our back door. So going for a dark oak door on here again. And above that, just an upside down quartz stair, just to make it look a bit more detailed. Let me get this back filled in. I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so that's what the back looks like. Um, it's exactly the same mirror as the front. And we're going to come around and do the balcony on here uh, later on once we've done the front one. So moving around to the side, you may be thinking, where is all the glass? Where, why haven't we got any glass in here? We'll put a second skin on the inside of the building to get the glass in. So this window is three blocks across like so. Place in the window. So this is where this other side doesn't have one. Now we count in, I'm just going to leave that one there for a second. We count in three blocks from here and we do exactly the same as we did with the last bay window. So let me just fill that in and then we, I'll show you guys what this wall looks like. Okay, so that's what this side looks like now. And that is the entirety of the base level kind of done for the main walls. Take a quick glance around it. You can see we've got all of these windows in, bay windows as well. And it looks great, doesn't it? So let's jump back round to the front. You've seen the back now. Let's jump back round to the front and get this little balcony section going. Right, so the first thing you want to do is place down the floor for the balcony. I'm just using spruce wood for this um, as it looks a bit nice. Breaks up the contrast with the jungle planks a little bit. And now for the rest of the front, you want to be using birch fences. I'm just going to grab out birch fences and some birch fence gates as well. So for this porch at the front, what you want to be using is birch fences and birch fence gates. Now they look quite basic, but they do look really quite nice. Now this is only being used because we don't actually have uh, quartz pillars yet, which is annoying. Not pillars as such, quartz walls. Anyway, we're counting up four blocks here. One, two, three, four. Above this, we'll be placing in some more quartz. We're going to grab out some quartz um, slabs. When I say quartz, I actually mean smooth quartz. Um, it's because I don't actually use normal quartz anymore at all. Uh, and then on this one, you want to be placing in an upside down smooth quartz stair. Same again here. And one more on the edge there. And in between these, place upside down quartz slabs. They aren't upside down. They're just the higher level. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, anyway, on the edge here, placing in another birch fence. Then one, two, three, four birch fence gates connects in like that. It's a good little detail, this makes it look a bit more like ironwork than it would do placing stairs in here upside down. So let's count this off again. So one, two, three, four, five. Then another birch fence, one, two, three. There we are, so that's four up like that. I like how I stopped at three because I didn't know what I was counting. Do the same thing here. So we need an upside down quartz stair, upside down quartz stair here, and another one there. So you get a nice little archway. And fill this in with quartz slabs. So that's the first balcony pretty much done. So we've got this round here. So it's two of those along the side. Now let's jump around to the back and I can show you guys what that looks like. And then we can move on up to actually starting the middle floor. Okay, so on my way over to the back, I've actually gone inside and filled in all the windows. So let me just show you what I've done with these. 
Uh, I've placed just a block behind here. I've gone for cyan terracotta. You guys can do whatever you want to fill your interiors with. I am not doing an interior in this video. I don't do them. Uh, I'm not very confident of doing them. So maybe in the future for a few of these builds, we can go back and revisit that and put some interiors in. But right now, I am not in any position to show you guys how to do the interior. So fill it with whatever you want. But for this, you want windows inside here, four blocks high, so you can get the archway with a little bit of glass behind it, which just makes it look perfect. So coming around to the back here, you can already see where these fences need to go. So we've got one more on the corner here, another one here up this side, just so you can fill that all the way up. Now we're not going to go all the way up again, we're going up one, two, three, four blocks. And on top of the fourth block, we need to be placing this in like so. And what this is, is like a railing around the top. So we, we, this back porch is actually different to how we're going to have it on the front. Around the front, we've got an entire roof to put on there. Now, what we're going to do here at this point is break out one, two, three, four, and then we place another bit of quartz there. I forgot to mention this at the beginning because I had actually forgot about it until just then. But what this does is means we can now put a staircase down through here. So let me just jump to having that done. Okay, so there's the little staircase in there again, just going for a quite heavy staircase. Gives you a little bit of room under there to look at, but nothing nothing more than that. So what you want to do here is just copy across this, so one, two, three, four, up like so, and build that round the top, and it's the same over this side. And this just breaks it all up a little bit, gives you a little bit more depth across here, and then one, two, three, four, and it's the same here. So let me just get all of this um, filled in. So across the bottom here, we're going for the same effect as we got on the front. And that's what you guys just need to do. Fill that in through there and across uh, at the top as well. So let me just jump to having that done. Okay, so that's that section done. What we've got to do now is put the roof on for this. So in order to do that, we need to grab out some andesite. And I, I said earlier on, I use this as a sort of flat roof and go around the edge here and just place it in. Now what's going to happen is you're going to end up covering up the top arches of these windows which is a little bit of a shame and you can always lower these windows down by one block like this just so you can no longer, you know, so you can still show off that arch a little bit. So go ahead and do that and then you get yourself a bit more space above the window. So these windows should be now too high and you get yourself a little bit of an archway across the top. So we fill this all in with andesite and we can come back and place on the, the final little bit of this porchway. Okay, so that's with your lowered windows in there now, so they look a bit better that way around. Now, grab out some more smooth quartz stairs and go around and just put a cornice on the top of this. And that is the back porch done. So if you watch my first Victorian 1.16 house tutorial, you will notice I've done a very similar porch to the back of that. And that's because I really liked it on that. I thought it fit quite well on this one as well. So guys, that's the back done. It's time to jump back around to the front. We can finish off that porch. Okay, so it's now time to do a little bit of molding and detailing around the top of this porch. We're actually gonna be adding a small mansarded roof on top of here. It's not a massive roof. It's just a sort of couple of flights of blackstone. But before we do that, we need to build ourselves a frieze and a cornice. So let's grab out some white concrete to use as a backdrop for this because the blue tinge on it really does help break up the white quite a bit. So you're going to be grabbing your white concrete and placing it on top of these stairs and slabs like we've done before, leaving these corners because these need to carry on all the way up to the top. We'll carry on with those in a second. So on the corner here, you want to be placing a stair like that and then a stair upside down on top of it like so. With this one here, you do want to be knocking it out and placing just a full block. So we're going to use some quartz pillar there. You can use whatever. And that's because when we come around to doing this, You'll be placing back-to-back -back stairs like so to give you a nice sort of crenellated effect along this edge. Look at that. Perfect. You get this nice little, I think it's crenellations, I believe that's the term, and you get that along there. We're going to do the same around this side, and it just breaks up a little bit. Before, you know, you could be placing them like this, leaving one and, and going like that, but it does look a bit chunky. This way you get a sort of nice clean edge to it. So that's what you got to do for the main porch section there. Let's move ourselves around to the front door. I'll show you guys what we're doing with that. Okay, so above the door, we're going to be placing upside, well, a right way up stair like so, upside down for what you would normally place on a wall. And then above that, you place two upside down. Breaks up a little bit, gives you a bit more detail across here. Now on top of this, we're going to be carrying on this white concrete motif all the way across to here where we need to do the whole double stair thing. At this point, you can actually leave the stair in that corner. Again, this gives a nice little bit of depth. Okay, so above the door, you need to be placing an upside down stair like so, 
and another one like that. And then behind these, we're going to be placing in some smooth quartz slabs just to break it up a little bit. Similar to what we've got here with this sort of crenellated fashion. And there's your sort of front door mouldings. I think it looks quite nice. Breaks up a bit more of this jungle wood. So coming on round now to this side, it's exactly the same as what we've done over here. So I'm going to jump to having that done and then we can get the roof on these first little sections. Okay, so now's the time to place the blackstone on here to form what I would like to call a little mansard roof, but it's not really, it's just sort of a flat roof. So going around, you're placing one course in of blackstone and then you're putting up another course behind that. That's what you kind of got for the front. Uh, it's not really elegant. It's not much space you could do much with. But over here, the idea is we carry this on like round all the way across the top of the quartz stairs, breaking in the corner like so. And then we go up one more here so you can get yourself a whole block. Now on top of this whole block, we can probably be placing whole blocks, but I'm placing slabs still because I don't like changing blocks. You need to be placing some birch stairs. So on top of this whole block, we need to be carrying on this idea of using birch fence gates as a sort of iron railing type thing. And we're placing this around the whole of the top of here. So carry this on like this. It's exactly the same pattern as we've got downstairs. I tried to find another way of doing that, but I thought that looked quite nice still. So it's the same again over here. Let's jump to having this all done. Then we can fill that in and we can get started on the second floor. Okay, so it's time for us to add the windows on this section. What I've done is I've gone up one more layer with the jungle wood. So we're now up to one layer of well, the same level as the fence gates here. And inside here, we want to be placing down some andesite like we've done with the back, just to add that sort of texture of a flat roof that's been covered in a little bit of lead. So following with the same idea, we want to be using the upside down smooth quartz stairs here as the base of this window and the same here. So these are just exactly the same as they are below, two blocks in from each side. Follow this all the way up. These windows are the same height again. So we want to be making them free high with the trap doors and then one more block on top of that for the archway. So the archway should be four blocks up from there. And this just gives you a nice high window, lets a lot of natural light in. And these buildings, these Second Empire homes really are a lot like this. So it's the same again around here. I love saying that, it's the same again because these builds just work on symmetry or at least similar um, similar styles and similar functions. So I'm just filling this all in. Um, this is actually where we need to place another window in. So directly above the roof here, placing in another window. And then we're gonna do exactly the same over here again while carrying this all the way up, which I haven't been doing. There we go. So let me just jump to having this corner done and the trap doors in, and then we can go around and show you what the rest of this floor looks like for the rest of the house. Right, okay, so I got quite a lot done there. As you can see, I filled in all the windows with all the trap doors and gone around to the sides and added in all of the windows around there. So let's have a quick look at these. So you need to count in three blocks from the edge here because it can't sit centrally over the bay window because the bay window has got one block wide center. So what I've done is made sure these two windows are symmetrical up here. So you count in one, two, three from the edge. Same window designs we have down there and around the front. And it's also three from the edge here. So you're left with a nice gap of five in the middle, which we can put a chimney up later on when we do the roof. Coming round to the back, you can see these windows are fairly high up from that flat roof. And that's given me a chance to put in a few little balconies here at the front. Not really balconies, more just mouldings around the bottom of the window. And again, it's exactly the same as it is below here. So it's two blocks in from the quilts pillar. And then we have a quartz pillar running up the center like that. This one is the only difference. It's actually been sort of centralized. Three blocks in from the quartz pillar here and four blocks in from the quartz pillar there. Coming round to the other side, and you can see we have a window that's now three blocks in from the outside to sit above the bay window. This is all left blank because we have a fireplace and a chimney above that. Okay, so the next stage now is to place white concrete around the whole of this top section here, even on the, the tower. And on this, we're going to be placing some mouldings like we've done down here, the sort of crenellated effect, because that again just breaks up between the actual rooms and then the roof. And above this, we'll place the roof and the dormers. So it's exciting stuff we're getting there. The tower is the final part of this build, and we'll get around to that in a bit. So let me just go around the whole building, put this white concrete down, then we can jump back to the front, and I can show you what to do with the quartz stairs. Okay, so what we're going to do here is add in the crenellate effect around the top here. You can see I've done this side here and the rest of the building as well. So we're just going to go around 
and place it on the front like so. I need to show you guys what to do with the bit around the tower. So above this, you will be placing one block out from the actual base of the stairs and we're gonna be using some smooth quartz slabs. Now this just hides the actual part of the mansard roof that we stick up here and it will look good in a bit. So what you do on the corner is you come out one, go back in diagonally one so we can get the actual bit of mansard roof on there. And then it's the same case of coming all the way around like this. So I'm gonna fill up that in a second. What I wanted to show you guys actually is how to do this front bit. So you place in some stairs like so. Then as we did with the bit down here, I'm gonna do this free stair sort of um, balcony bit. Inside here, we need to be placing a stair back on itself like so. And another one back to back with that one. And it's the same over here, so back on itself, so it bends around the corner and then on that one back to back, and you get this crenellated effect there. Now, between these two bits here, place in some of this, so we carry on this motif all the way around, even if we aren't building a roof behind here, because we will be placing some black stone slabs in here in a second. So let me go around and add this around the entirety of this base, and then we can get on to building the roof. Okay, so it's now time to start on the roof. What I'm gonna be using for this is the new blackstone bricks, or the polished blackstone bricks, now, first of all, where the tower is going to carry on up, we're going to be placing in front of that some blackstone um, slabs. And then the tower itself carries on up. As you can see here, we need to grab out some more quartz pillars and bring that up. So there's a whole other window height in here. Um, this is just because, obviously, it's a tower, so it needs to be a higher section than the rest of the building. So we'll get onto that once we get the roof in, but that's a little base for where we need to go up to. So coming around to the corner, place a couple more bits of blackstone in, builds around the tower itself. Then behind here, you want to be placing your first actual brick of the roof, and that is going to be some blackstone stairs. And that's going to be some polished blackstone brick stairs. Oh, that's such a complicated thing to say. Anyway, now let's bring that all the way around this base section. You don't really need to go back on itself here. We're just going to leave it like that. And that forms your first part of the roof. Um, so behind this, it's going up one, two. So we've got a whole total of about three blocks here, or maybe two and a half because we're covering up half of it with a slab so this is where that we actually start off putting the dormers in but what, what I wanted to do first was actually put in the entirety of the roof face so we can see what it looks like in profile so what we want to do here is keep these two blocks gone they need to stay like that so it makes it look like it's actually going in and up on itself but we should, to get this effect we need to come around this side a little bit and put a few more blocks in there now behind this we need to go up two more blocks so one, two, and this carries on all the way around. We're going to do the same thing here again where we leave that center block, sorry, that corner block out. Uh, like I mentioned, it makes it look like it is going up at a sort of slope rather than a straight edged sort of cliff. And then one more block after that in height again, but you can see what we've got so far. Yes, it does look a bit plain and a bit boring, but this new block is so good. I love it. So you want to be placing it in like that. And then technically this does go up two blocks because this is your final block. And on this one, we're going to be placing some more quartz stairs. And these just act as a sort of detail that run around the top of this section of the roof. When we get this whole roof in for this mansarded section, it'll be then time to go on to actually do the sort of semi-flat, very, very low slope section of the hipped roof on top. But we'll get around to that when we get the tower in place. But you can see there, that is what the mansard roof looks like. I'm going to go around and complete the whole of this roof with that. And then I'm going to get back to putting the dormers in. So, so I'm going to go around and get that done. Okay, so I've gone around and built the entirety of the mansarded section of the roof. You can see it here. Looks excellent with these new bricks in it. So it's time now to place in the dormers. Let's start with the front two over here. So they're going to mirror what these windows are doing down here. We're going to be using going to be using iron trap doors along with smooth quartz stairs to make these windows. So what you need to do is count in, well, count across four blocks really. So you need two blocks in the centre where we're going to have the actual lining up of the windows. Then one block either side for the actual base of the window. Now with inside the window, we're going to be doing exactly the same as we've done on the ground floor and the other floors as well. And that is just place three lots of trap doors like so. So you above sort of this level, you get two and a half blocks as a window. Again, we've got that slab there just to help 
ease this up a little bit. So this needs to go back one block as well. So you can actually get yourself some glass inside there. And this is lined again with these iron trap doors. Like I said earlier on in the video, this section can be done with birch or any other trap door you feel suits. I'm using iron trap doors because it has a similar color to what you would expect a window box to be painted in in this time period. An off-white, not bright as the rest of the, the actual moldings. So again, birch would work really quite well for this. So above the window, what you want to do is place a sort of tunnel or an archway of two stairs upside down next to each other like so. And that gives you again this little archway exactly as we've got on the other two windows. So what this means is behind here, knock that block out like so, and you can't see through because you've got this covering there. So the actual details around the top of the windows are as followed. What you want to do is place just two normal stairs on top like that, same over here, and then along the side, an upside down selection of stairs. And hey presto, you've got yourself a really nice looking dormer, which just has that perfect Second Empire detailing with the mouldings around the top. So we're going to place another one in here, so it's the same thing again, break out the blocks like so, and this is why it was important to have this three block wide section in the middle here, so you're left with not having these two bits of moulding next to each other. So let's quickly just get this in, and then we can go around and I can place the rest of them, and we can have a little look as to where they go. Okay, so aren't they looking fine? Just look at them. What a pair they are. So behind that, you want to be placing in the white stained glass as we've been using throughout this entire build. Coming around to the side, as we said before, we're going to have a chimney up through here, so we might as well build it in now. You can place it wherever you want, really. What I'm going to do is make it three blocks wide, so it's quite a prominent chimney, and this is where the main fireplace will be. Build it up as high as you want to go. I tend to make it just below the mouldings there. So above this, you can either go for using flower pots, but my personal preference is to use anvils, as they look like chimney pots, and they just have an odd shape to them, which draw your eye to it which is kind of what these chimneys were on these Second Empire houses, quite flamboyant, quite detailed. So that's the chimney placed right there. And what you want to do here is above this window again, knock out these blocks and place yourself a dormer in there. And then coming round to the back, you will have another dormer here and here. So you've got yourself them exactly as mirrored on the front. And then you can go for another one here if you wish as well. So you've got yourself three dormers across the top there. We'll place these in in a second and I'll show you guys what it looks like. And then you can place another one above that one and another one above there. Now you may be wondering, is there any above this one? I tried to put one in there when I was doing my test build. Didn't work very well at all, so we omitted that one. But I still think it looks perfectly fine without it. So let me go around and get this roof section finished with all the um, dormers on there. And then we can start on the tower and placing the final bit of the roof on. Okay, so that's all the dormers in place. I haven't actually put in any glass yet. That's something we can do later on. It's not a biggie at this stage. So you can see around the back we've got the three. On this side we've just got the one. And on the front we've got two of them. Excellent. So now it's time to address the elephant in the room. And that is the tower. So you want to go seven blocks up to the next section. Which will tie in with here. So at the moment we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So at that point this comes round and ties you in. We'll get on to that in a second. Because it's not as straightforward as just tying it in like that. It's very similar to what we've done on this bit down here with some of those, but we'll get onto that in two seconds. So count this all the way up to seven here, and it's the same on this corner, because you can actually see this corner. Uh, making sure that is the corner. Yep, that's perfectly fine. But you obviously can't see that corner there because the mansard roof is in the way. Now I've done this to give a bit more depth to the building. Obviously when we get on to actually building this section of the roof, the lines aren't gonna match up as such. But we'll, we'll address that again in a moment. So window-wise, we're going to be placing in two windows. So you've got a window here on this side and in the center as well. So you can get those nice big views of this gothic tower. So that's what I like about these buildings. They always have these nice big towers on them. Apart from my one I did last time because that didn't have a nice big tower on it. But anyway, so in here we want to be placing in some more iron trap doors. So one, one, two, three. And one, two, three. So open those up. Above that, placing in the exact same mouldings as we've done before. So you get yourself a nice little archway. And then we fill in this level here with jungle wood. And above this, we're going to be placing, well, getting rid of the stuff I've put there and placing in white concrete again. So this will form the final part of our sort of crenellation section. 
and that connects in like that. So for this, we need to be just be placing a upside down stair on each of these corners, like so. Can be using a stair backwards like that, and like that. But instead of doing it like we've done down here, we can be grabbing out a piece of quartz slab and placing that above it like so. Gives you a bit more of a differencing sort of appearance. And there we are, we're getting the mouldings round here. It's definitely taking shape into the second empire home. So it's exactly the same round this side. So let's just do this moulding. I know it put the wall in. I'll put that in in two seconds before we get up onto doing the roof's tower. Okay, so there we are. We have the actual tower section complete. It's time now to place the roof on the tower. So I think we're going to crack on with that first before we do the boring roof, which is the bit behind here. So what you want to do for this is the same bricks again. Going to be using polished blackstone brick stairs on top of here. And we're placing those out here on this ridge. Okay, and the same across here and round this side as well. Now, you will want to do it on this side at the back as well. So we'll, we'll quickly fill that in so we get something to build on. So you can see what I've done here. This is a little trick I've just put in. Uh, so it looks like it's got shingles on the actual building itself. So we're going to be putting in this like here and it just carries on round. It just hides the tower slightly. Well, it makes the tower look stronger while hiding the fact that behind there is still a wall. So coming around the top here, we're going to be placing another six of these across like so. And that gives us our first little bit of a square. So we're going to be using the same ideas as we did with the other mansard roof. And that is the corners are omitted. I'm going to go up by three blocks here. So you can see we're getting a nice little peak out of this tower already. So it's the same around that side. And we do this side as well just for completeness. So we can get an idea of how this tower is going to go. Building two wide towers are always a nightmare. I'm not going to lie. I hate them. <laughs> So in the centre here, we're going to be placing two stairs like so. And this just sort of brings everything up to a point a bit more. And then behind this, placing in another course of the blackstone. This time we are going to have the corners in up to there. So take out that one. And again, this just helps bring the design up to a point. Because these roofs are quite pointy and they're really hard to do, like I said, when you've only got two wide. So finishing off this corner here. And then above that, you want to be placing another set of stairs. Again, bringing this up to a bit more of a point. You can already see it's starting to take really good shape now. Uh, obviously, it still looks quite heavy, quite blocky because of the black stone. But I think it does look great. And then above this, we're going to be placing the final course of black stone. And on top of that, if you wish to, you can place some iron fencing to make it look a bit more like it's got the railings around the top which a lot of these Victorian buildings do have. There we are. So that's the tower pretty much complete. All that's left to do is the back part of that roof. And now we can jump on to actually doing the main part of the top roof. Okay, so we're over here now next to the tower. You can see I've done the back of it. So it's all complete, really nice looking tower. If you have any questions on that, please let me know in the comments below. It's not, you know, this is my first attempt at doing this in a very long time. So please be gentle. <laughs> Anyway, let's get on with building this part of the roof. So what you want for this are polished blackstone brick slabs. So with this, we're going to be starting by coming back behind here and placing another block of blackstone. Uh, this is because I want this roof to be really, really low sloped um, because you aren't meant to see it behind this sort of cornice. And above this, we're going to be placing another course of the slabs. In the corner, we should be placing the unpolished andesite slabs just to make it look a bit more like I said, like a lead lining. At this point, you still go up one on the slabs. So coming around like so. Now, it takes a little bit of a different turn here. We're not going to go up by one this time. We're going to go along by one. So this is the same level. Helps build this pitch in here. And then this section goes up by one. And then you go up once more. And that is the peak of the roof. And we'll fill that all in once we get to the rest of the roof done. So coming around onto this side, it does get a little bit more complicated. We just need to follow the same sort of pattern where we can. Obviously, you, you are just raising this up one block. So at this point, you want to go out a couple blocks because we are trying to keep this section here as similar as we can. So the best way to do it is to freehand it in because 
honestly trying to calculate it in my head it hurts because <laughs> you are just going to make some mistakes with it it doesn't really matter if it doesn't look 100 percent correct because this section of the roof in its nature is not meant to be seen so we're going to get this roof filled in probably a little time lapse quickly and then we can finish off the actual build with a bit of decoration around the base i will show you what it looks like once the roof's on Right, okay, so this is how the roof is looking before I fill in the final section, which is the flat bit. You can see here, I have kind of just freehanded it in, making sure all of the lines of the ridges make their way up to the top without being too, uh, not realistic as such, but, but too conscious of what's going on. So I urge you guys just to freehand that in there. Once you've joined up the rest of the roof, it does make sense. Also, it's hidden behind the tower, so no one's ever gonna see it. Now for this section here, what you want to do is grab out some more polished, uh, unpolished andesite and place in another course in here. I'm just going to cover that back in. Uh, and then on here, you can place a bit more of that iron railing for the effect of that sort of gothic mansion, like so. And as I mentioned, this is now the end of this section of actually house building. So all we got left to do is tidy up a few of the little bits and bobs, and I'll show you guys how it looks in a landscape. So let's jump off over to that. Okay. So what I've done here is just gone around and pasted a lot of my custom trees in and around the place. You know, what? I can't even remember where I got these custom trees from. It's been about five or six years since I got them. So sorry, I can't put a download link to them. But honestly, this place has really, really, really come together now. Do you know what? Let's have a look at it in some shaders just to really see how this place is looking. Um, I'm actually in love with the style right now, especially when it can look this good. Now, this would not look out of place in a horror film. You've got this long, dark path that you sort of have to go up to. I know there's flowers and stuff around, so it looks a bit nicer. But at the moment, you know, you've got this haze in front of it. But yeah, look at it. It looks so good in this sort of surrounding of trees everywhere. So I haven't really done much of a garden. I've just sort of put a path all the way around the building. But now it's no longer standing in the middle of nowhere. It actually looks incredible. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I really can't wait to see what you end up doing with this build because to me, it's actually one of my favorite builds I've ever done. And yeah, I'm going to do some more of these in the future. So guys, thank you all for watching so much. I will be back soon with more of these. If you haven't already, drop a like, leave a comment, you know, subscribe to the channel so I can get some more of these out to you guys. But also be sure to check out some of my other stuff because I do a lot of styles that people don't really know about, especially the English Victorian stuff. So guys, go check that out. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.